How to create button components with variants using Auto Layout, a crucial element that ties everything together. Buttons not only look great, but also enhance usability and functionality. So if you're ready to take your design skills to the next level, stick around because you won't miss a single second. Let's dive into it. Let's first define our text and the line height. So text is size is going to be 14 and the line height is going to be 14 multiplied by 1.5. I'll keep it on 20 because this is not going to be a copy. So I'm going to have two or three lines of, uh, of text. That's why I will keep it to 20. But when you have, um, when you have, uh, going to have a paragraph or something, that would be a good rule to use. And you're always going to have a nice paragraph and it will be easy to read. This is going to be our first button. We're going to do next. We're going to go right here and I'm going to click Add Auto Layout. You can go Shift A as well. I'm usually using a shortcut. If you guys are using a shortcut, that's going to be very useful for you. You'll speed up your work a lot. Let's add the spacing between the items 8. And let's add the left and right, which is horizontal panic. Let's put it to 16. And here we're going to leave it to 8. So this one right here is going to be left. That's going to be right. That's going to be top. That's going to be bottom. If you hold Option and Shift on your keyboard, you should see all the button and all the size left, right top and bottom right and if you want to change them at the same time we just have to grab either the left or the right and just move it and it will increase the proportion I'm gonna hit ctrl z because I don't want to do that this is just for you to know in the future I'm gonna have I'm gonna add the color to it just gonna be this blue I'm gonna make the copy the text white I'm gonna copy this button is gonna be small I'll show you what we're gonna do next let's add the roundness to four that's cool now we got our first button let's move next that's gonna be a second one so let's duplicate the first instance let's go right here this is gonna be our hover button which will go here it's gonna be the third button which will be our active one here we go this is going to be fourth button. This is going to be a little different. I will show you. So we're going to do next is we're going to add the stroke to it. It's going to be four. Let's make it white. Let's go to effects. Click drop shadow and let's add the inner shadow. Let's reduce the blur to zero. This is going to be minus two. And the color is going to be the first one. Okay. Same is going to happen with that one main button. That's cool. So, no. What we're going to do, let's hit A. Because this is going to be active button. Then we need to have, it need to have this, it's going to be focus. So this one, this uh, focus button needs to have the same color as the active one, which means it's currently active, okay? That's very important. Duplicate this, Control C, Control V. So what you want to do, if you want to co copy the shadow, make sure you click on this spot right here, on these three little lines, and then you click, click Control C, and then you will click Control V, and you will copy the same styling. If, you, if you're going to, but you click here, here in another area, it won't copy. So make sure you hit here on the left, otherwise it won't work. Okay, the same. So what we're gonna do next, for the next second one is gonna be, first one was minus two, and this one would be two, okay? That's cool, so now you can see that the top and bottom. All right, that's cool. Let's do the same, Control C, Control V, let's do it twice. Minus two, right here. And this one, I'm gonna put it zero on the X, on the I, and let's put it X. It's gonna be two, right? Is that correct? Yeah, that's fine. If you can see right here, you see the, the corners, the outside corners, they're rounded, but this side, inside the square. What we have to do is, is change the, the stroke from inside to outside. Here we go. That fixed, that fixed it. Let's go ahead and create the fourth button, which would be a disabled one. That's going to be very simple. So we have our gray color here. I'm going to add the grayish color as well to it. Something like that. that let's make it a little bit darker. That should work. That's fine. And let's add a stroke to it as well. Because I want it, I want it to be very, very light. It needs to be visible at the same time. 
let's click to H Xcode so you can see it better. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so now when we have our initial instance, what I think I'll have to do is another button, which is gonna be our loading state because we have this icons icon here. So let's add it here. Bam, done. So if as you can see, let's select all the buttons. We see it says hug content our content so if right now I'm gonna add more copy you're gonna see the button the frame of all this hug the text this is what we need one thing to, to keep in mind is make sure you have this the alignment put it to center okay because otherwise you will go from the left to right so it's always good uh, this goal is good idea to have it centrally aligned all right two ways to do it is you can do it you can name those components you may name these components by themselves or you can do that all at the same time and then go ahead and just change it hit command r you'll have this dial where you can rename multiple components at the same time what we're gonna do next is let's first uh, align those to the left let's have the horizontal scrolling let's add a bit more padding between them duplicate this first um, row of buttons this is gonna be our small one now we're gonna have a medium one everything that will change is just the padding right here on the top and bottom so that will be from 8 it's gonna be to 10 usually usually the way I'm doing is I'm increasing proportionally the left and right as well so for this instance we're gonna keep it like that okay that's cool the second set of button and this is gonna be the third one so we're gonna have you guessed it we're gonna be 12 that's right now let's add a little bit more padding between them make sure they uh, they align I'm gonna do that later as well here we go okay now it's good three sets of button I'm gonna go ahead and click first three row first three row three buttons I'm gonna click command R to rename them first what I what I want it to be is what kind of button is that so that would be type right kind of type of button is primary all right let's get primary let's go now i'm gonna add a comma it's gonna be a second property that i want it to be size size equals they're gonna be l we're gonna change it later okay usually what you can do you can hit the number here but that's gonna add more complexity for us let's hit s for the small one so the third one what i want it to be is icon so for the icon what you should what you should do is if you hit true if you do have an icon and false if you don't on these three instances we won't have an icon so let's hit false all right that's fine type um, size and let's add state as well because a state so it's very important that you have a comma between them and then the last one don't add the comma otherwise the the components they won't work so state this one would be a default one okay Fault. all right that's cool let's check type primary that's the default state we have default size s icon false let's rename them that's cool create multiple components okay we have create multiple components now Let's hit right here, combine as variants. So what we have to do is hit primary here. That's cool. So now, if you hit it right here, it says select com conflict variants. So if you click, you see it's a lot of variants that com have conflict. It's because we haven't defined the states yet for those buttons. Let's go ahead and do that. So you see, as we've already done for the first three buttons, because we named them already, he already added the state, ty type, state, size, icon, and property property we don't really need that because it is been added here because of all these buttons they have property but what we're gonna do in the end is we won't have property you can actually name it whatever you it's comfortable for you this is how i'm doing it this is how most of the designers do this is gonna be our primary button it's gonna be default size s it doesn't have icon that's cool this one right here is gonna be size add new let's hit m right so that's gonna be medium button all we're gonna do is right here click add new which is L. We have is S, M, and L, right? That's cool. We we'll keep icon to false. Let's go ahead and do the same for the second set. 
type. This is going to be always primary. What we're going to do, uh, what we, what we, the way we've added the types is, what we're going to do later is we're going to expand this box and we're going to add a secondary, tertiary, call to action and so on. So you're going to have a complex. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to focus on the primary, okay? This is going to be state. So for the state, this is going to be our hover state. Size S, icon, false. That's cool. Let's uh, have it the same state hover M false, right? Primary state hover L false. Yeah? That's cool. So this one, these three buttons right here, they're all gonna be primary. The state is gonna be active, right? And the size is gonna be S M. L. Okay, this one right here, it's a third, it's a fourth one. So that's going to be primary state is going to be loading, loading, or you can put just load, low add, uh, load. That's cool. State size is going to be S, M, M. And this is going to be L. So very important. If you later on decided that you want to have an uh, icon on your right, then you will have to define it here. Otherwise, that wouldn't work. What I would suggest you do is, whenever you add the icon here to this button, because you always, because in later you might want to have these buttons, the default buttons that have an icon, right? So what I would suggest you do is you add this icon you define it as another component, which is default state, right? But the uh, icon is, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do it, it's better uh, for that. So it's very important is when you do do that, is this icon should be a component and you should have a separate folder, separate folder for all the icons and use the instance from that folder. And then what you're gonna be able to do is whatever you're gonna have the instance, you will be able to click on this icon icon right here to go ahead and change the states from here okay it's very important because if you do you don't use it as a component you won't be able to change it and then you'll have to go back all the time detach the instance that's gonna make things harder okay so what we're gonna do now is add the icon to these buttons right and what we're gonna do is to select all those buttons and add a new state which is true right so now you have a default button, which is doesn't have an icon, it has a false, and the second set, which is default, but it has an icon, and then we hit through right here. I'll show you later how it works, okay? That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and do it uh, quickly for, for uh, what we at right now. Okay, let's icon true, icon true, icon. That's true, that's cool, okay, so now, that's going to be our focus state. If you guys don't know, the focus is when someone usually is when someone use his uh, focus, his keyboard to navigate through the website. And then every time you hit tab, you will select an element. It's very important you define that because because from accessibility point of view, this is very important. Uh, deck S. That's going to be L M S. That's cool. Now we got the last button state is disabled it's cool disabled let's keep the size would be s m l and let's put the icon for those faults okay now if you look right here let's see what is the What's the variance that says the in conflict? Mm -hmm. Let's check this out. Say frame 10, okay. Because all these buttons, they have that property, where it is. We don't need that. Okay. So now, for these buttons right here, we haven't defined the icon. 
that's why it says it's conflict right that's all let's go ahead and do that okay so now you can see there is no any more um, conflicts on that that means all the components has been uh, structured and named correctly all right so you can see right here on the naming panel what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add states and the sizes because i already done that i just go ahead and move them up here we go all right that's cool so now what we can do is expand this panel get these buttons make them like that that will be your size m l s right so for the buttons what we're gonna have to do is ungroup this distribute horizontal oh, because it will been done twice give me a second sorry that's cool done here we go so what we guys right here we're missing one which says icon right so then distribute vertical spacing and let's reduce it a bit so make sure it's correctly aligned here we go that's nice now what we have is we've named all our buttons we have all of them selected it's very important let's when you drag an instance let's only hit alt as you can see is button it shows type let's hit hover active load focus disabled all of them work you have this toggle here so if you do an add the icon it's with default you want to have an icon that's cool if you don't want to have it you just you just click this toggle on and off and you will enable or disable the button find out more right you see how the button is is responsive to my uh, to the text right this is amazing and guys it's very important if you if you do use an icon you do use an icon make sure it's it's a component and you use an instance here that would save you so much time in uh in your work process because if you use just a simple icon that hasn't been hasn't been done as a component then you won't be able to change it because as your design system grows you're gonna have different icons and the buttons gonna have some of them gonna have spinning wheels some of them is gonna have different types of arrows so on so that's very important to keep in mind. Multiple, uh, multiple ways and plugins uh, in Figda and they can do all these uh, instances of the buttons in just basically a few clicks. But it's very important for you to understand because I used to do that in the past. I used to just run the plugin, do those buttons, make them work, you know, and that's it. And let's, let's go ahead and save time. But then what's going to happen next is because you don't know the, how they've been named, how they've been structured, stuff like that. You always have struggle and you will have to go and rename them, change the component. Then you'll have to change every other instance. So that's going to be a lot of hassle. So, and uh, where it's possible and saves time, I will use the plugins. What I would do is you're going to have all these buttons right here. You don't copy like that, right? Because that won't work. You'll have to select control command you select all your buttons you duplicate them you detach the instance and then you add the secondary call to action tertiary call to action then you're gonna have success uh successful action which will be green then gonna be an error one and so on so this is how you grow your design system and how um, the buttons would behave this is very important to do on when you as you move along on the project ideally should be done from the beginning but it's not always that you have an understanding and a from uh, what the project would be, what the uh, styling of the project would be. So it's always important to have that. That was gonna save you time.